So it's been about a year now since I passed my foundation exam and received the call sign Mike 7 Echo Uniform Papa. And like every other amateur radio operator that there ever has been, I dreamed that one day I would have my own shack, something I could call my own, while and away the hours making QSOs all over the world and having photos on my QIZ page of a room filled with the latest equipment. But sadly, again like most new operators who begin their descent down this rabbit hole of a hobby, it rapidly became apparent that other than a lottery win, my dreams would not be realised. For the first few months after I received my licence, I kind of threw myself into the VHF and UHF side of things. It's an easy way to get started, what with the abundance of wallet-friendly Chinese handhelds that seem to be available. And it was new and exciting, and certainly helped by the inclusive events like the 145 Alive, which saw a kind of resurgence in the VHF UHF operations. But there was still this itch that needed scratching, a deep yearning to join the big boys on HF with my own equipment and coveted QTH. So I set myself a bit of a challenge and I wanted to build my own HF shack complete with transceiver, power supply unit, antenna and some sort of logging facility, but for less than £500. Spoiler alert, I did do it and I'm going to take you through exactly how I achieved it, so get yourself comfy. Oh, and I'll be listing things in order that I did them, uh, not maybe the order that you think I would have done them, so please be patient. Now's a good time also to tell you that being a member of your local amateur radio club is essential and I joined HADARS, which is the Halifax and District Amateur Radio Club, about two months before taking my foundation licence exam. The shared knowledge, community spirit and support that's offered will pay huge dividends throughout your journey into amateur radio and this takes us to item number one on my list of things. So the club was having a clear out of its magic storeroom and as part of the annual audit several items were listed on the club's media pages for sale. I spotted a low EP925 power supply unit and for £20, bagged it and collected it from the club's next meeting. It was presented to me tested, calibrated and fully functioning and was definitely a bargain that was more than adequate for my needs. The next thing I had to do was sort out some sort of antenna. I wanted a multi-band antenna but given my location of vertical wasn't going to be an option and after weeks of planning and discussions with a neighbour, I settled on an end-fed half-wave strung between the chimney breast of my property and the neighbour's property. It's about 11 metres off the ground and mounted horizontally. The antenna wire is DX50, purchased from DX Commander during a flash sale and at 22 metres it came in at £38.25, including postage. So an end-fed half-wave, multi-banded, uh, for 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres, needs a 49 to 1 unun and also a 1 to 1 choke. And I've got both of these made by uh, a friend of mine called Greg at the club and he did that for the cost price, and which all came in at about £38. For the coax and connections, they use 10 metres of Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7 with their Evolution 259 connections and it all came in at around £35 in total. I also spent £22 on Amazon for other fixtures and fittings like guy lines, ceramic insulators, glue lined heat shrink and wire clamps. Now at this point you're probably thinking that I could have bought an NFED half wave antenna for a similar price or less but I'm glad I did it this way as it was an invaluable learning experience but for those of you who do want to skip the construction you can get an excellent antenna from UK Antennas and I'll put a link for that in the description. If you're interested in the construction of my particular antenna, I did write a full article about this which will be published, or has been published depending on when you're watching this video, in the July 2024 edition of Radcon Basics, so if you're an RSGB paid up member you'll be able to view that there. Power supply and antenna sorted, I started to think about inside the shack itself. I say shack, it's actually the spare room in my attic but here goes anyway. I've been part of a community group for my little village on Facebook called Lend a Hand for quite a long time. Essentially, it's a place where people can hand on items that are no longer needed or ask for help from other community members. The group rules are simple. There's no business adverts and no one charges anything unless it's for spares to do repairs. So in the last few years, I've done so many repairs for people on this page. Lamps, coffee machines, vintage door handles, amplifiers, karaoke machines, computers, the list goes on but always just for the cost of any parts that I didn't have in my little workshop. It was on here that I saw a corner desk and office chair from someone that no longer needed it and I asked to be considered and I ended up picking those up the same day. The old fairly square 4x3 aspect monitor uh, that you can see there, that was in a pile of stuff that I'd volunteered to take to a recycling centre for somebody who didn't have a car. On inspection, I noticed it had a DVID input, which was important. You see, one day, when this channel has a million subscribers and I'm earning a fortune from it, I'll be purchasing a brand new Yesu FT-DX101MP, which has a DVID output, so I can display the waterfall on this monitor. But for now, I'll put it to other purposes. 
so just checking you have clicked on the subscribe button of course you have you wouldn't want to crush a man's dreams would you the other 1920 by 1080p monitor was simply on facebook community pages surplus to requirements so i managed to grab that one too again no cost let's talk about the computer so a lady asked on the community page if anyone could wipe the hard drives of two old computers so that they were data safe and ready for disposal I actually missed this request, but as so often is the case on this page, about 20 people tagged and recommended me. I called in to see her, and it turns out a couple of years ago, I helped her out when her computer had a virus and she lost all her PhD work. Back then, I managed to recover all of that data for her, and she's now a doctor. She immediately handed me the two computers, uh, along with a keyboard and a mouse, and basically said, I trust you to do whatever you want with them, and uh, dispose of them or keep them, it's entirely up to you. So that's how the computer itself came about but do bear in mind these are not expensive modest, modern powerful computer gaming systems they're basic and they're old but for the purposes of running logging software they would be more than adequate also i don't need two so after forensically wiping both systems and upgrading them to windows 10 and adding some extra ram from spares i had in the workshop i kept one and then donated the other back to the community page and it was finally taken by a family who needed it Essentially, this computer just runs logging software and an internet browser. It's not really powerful to do anything else. And in all honesty, I'm editing this video on my iPhone because it, it's easier and faster and works better. But I needed a computer for logging. I use Station Master software for logging and it's fairly new on the scene, but it's an active real-time system, features all the best bit of its competitors, and it's constantly being improved and updated by its developer and already has a huge fan database. It has an online desktop app and ios slash android based app so you'll never be without it and at the time of this recording it's free to use although subscribers can gain some additional benefits it's a superb platform and i've put a link in the description for those of you who want to have a look right i've been rushing through it but we're going to talk about the transceiver now so i'm going to slow down because there's a few things i want to tell you about it the radio is a Yesu FT450D, it's a workhorse of a radio with a built-in tuner and it's capable of 100 watts, although with my foundation license I'm just using 25. This particular one belonged to Dave Pask, his call sign was 2 Echo 0 Sierra Hotel Tango. He was a member of Hey Dars and is now sadly a silent key. He passed away on the 25th of March 2024, aged only 54. And although I never met him, I've been told he was a highly intelligent man who, along with a photographic memory, had a passion for motorbikes and was a talented musician who could play a number of instruments by ear. Dave had an interest in CB radio from an early age and following a hiatus of about 20 years rekindled his interest in radio, passing his foundation in 2014 and later his intermediate in December 2015. After he left us, his wife Beverly asked a friend and a fellow club member to sell and pass on his collection of radio equipment. I first saw the radio advertised on the group's social page, made some enquiries, and within a week I had finally completed my shack. The radio itself cost me £320. It's a privilege to be the new custodian of this particular radio. I've always loved old and well-used tools, the patina of a hard day's work, the repairs and modifications that set them aside from the sterility of a brand new piece of unloved equipment. Call me an old romantic, but I believe we make a mark on the inanimate objects that we collect, and a part of us lives on in them. So that's it. My entire shack complete for £473.25. It's been a long and laborious process, but it's also been a very enjoyable process too. It goes to show that you can have everything you need in an HF shack and not spend a fortune. I hope you have enjoyed this video and it only seems right that we finish off with seeing the actual radio, computers and everything else in action. So I'll leave you with this and once again if you have enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing. Hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, and this is Mog Zero, Victor, Delta Oscar, M0 video. It's calling CQ, hello CQ. Hello CQ, hello CQ. Hello CQ, hello CQ. And this is Mog Zero Victor, Delta Oscar M0 video. It's calling CQ and listening. Mike 7 Echo Uniform Papa. There was an M7 station before anyone else. The M7 was first. Uh, go ahead, the M7, please. Mike 7 Echo Uniform Papa, QSL. M7, P-U-P. Right, I did it, I knew, I heard you, but the other stations were so strong, which I'll get back to them in a minute. 
Mike 7 Echo Uniform Papa returning. Thank you, Tony. Yep, I've got your uh, QRZ purchase popped up there. Yeah, I'm up in Hebden Bridge in West Yorkshire. You're a solid 59 plus 20 uh, coming in here. I'm 25 watts on a Yezu FT450 Delta on an NFED half wave 40 2015 and 10. But yeah, lovely audio coming from your end. Uh, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, you're, um, you're sort of five, six, five, seven with me. Um, the 25 watts. The uh, 450D and the antenna all doing really, really, really well for you. Um, about 500 watts this week from an Acom 1000. The antenna's a dual band, double bazooka antenna, so good for here on 40. And I'm um, good for 80 as well, single free point. It's very nice and convenient to say. But I'm not sure I need to get it right. Um, I think it's about 90 some odd feet. The antenna overall is, but um, 45 feet to the feet, and a, no, 40 feet to the feet point, sorry. 26 feet to the uh, on the end, so in an inverted V, Matt. So, Matt, thank you very much for calling in, mate, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I do look forward to the next one. M7 EUP, M0 Radio. Take care, mate. All the best. M0 video from M7 EUP. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, uh, nice setup you've got there. Um, I'm just about to bid you 73s, but before I do, do I have your permission just to include this QSO in a little video I'm doing about how I built my shack? Over. No, you carry on. So for the video, you were actually 5 by 9 as well. And for the log, you were 5 by 9 on the last one to come up a little bit. So, um, no, you have my full permission. Do as you please. If you dare to use my dulcet tones or, or anything on the video, then, um, no problem, uh, Matt, that's absolutely fine, yeah? Lovely, thanks very much, Tony. And, uh, yeah, I'll get that in the log. You should see that pop up on my QRZ in the next day or two. So thank you very much, and all the best 73s. M0 video from M70 UP, uh, going clear. Yeah, 73s, Matt, all the best, take care. Uh, you look forward to the next one. 